The WTA made a big statement on Wednesday and definitely suspending roughly 10 tour level tournaments in China and Hong Kong. The news comes after Chinese tennis player Pong Shuai received international concern after she made sexual misconduct allegations against former Vice Premier Zhang Gao Li last month. After going public with the allegation, information about Pong and her accusatory post was scrubbed from the Chinese internet. Soon after, there was the worst Pong Shuai movement as the 35 year old hadn't been seen since making the Weibo post. After weeks of being in the dark, we finally got some confirmation that Pong was at least alive after she was spotted at a junior tennis event in Beijing. Also, the International Olympic Committee held a Zoom call with the former US Open semifinalist, claiming she appeared fine. Clearly that didn't suffice WTA CEO Steve Simon, who said in his statement that Pong's November 2nd Weibo allegations needed to be listened to and taken seriously. He admires her strength and courage, stating she knew the danger she faced going public. Since then, Simon says, Punk's message has been removed from the internet and discussion of the serious issue has been censored in China. Chinese officials have been provided the opportunity to seize the censorship, verifiably prove that Pong is free and able to speak without interference or intimidation, and investigate the allegation of sexual assault in a full, fair, and transparent manner. Unfortunately, the leadership in China has not addressed this very serious issue in any credible way. While we now know where Pong is, I have serious doubts that she is free, safe, and not subject to censorship, coercion, and intimidation. The WTA has been clear on what is needed here, and we repeat our call for a full and transparent investigation without censorship into Pong Shui's sexual assault accusation. None of this is acceptable, nor can it become acceptable. If powerful people can suppress the voices of women and sweep allegations of sexual assault under the rug, then the basis on which the WTA was founded, Equality for Women, would suffer an immense setback. I would not and cannot let that happen to the WTA and its players. As a result, and with the full support of the WTA Board of Directors, I am announcing the immediate suspension of all WTA tournaments in China, including Hong Kong. In good conscience, I don't see how I can ask our athletes to compete there when Peng Shui is not allowed to communicate freely and has seemingly been pressured to contradict her allegation of sexual assault. Given the current state of affairs, I am also greatly concerned about the risks that all of our players and staff could face if we were able to hold events in China in 2022. I have been gratified by the massive amount of international support the WTA has received for its position on this matter. To further protect Pong and other women throughout the world, it is more urgent than ever for people to speak out. The WTA will do everything possible to protect its players. As we do so, I hope leaders around the world will continue to speak out so justice can be done for Pong and all women, no matter the financial ramifications. I very much regret it has come to this point. The tennis communities in China and Hong Kong are full of great people with whom we have worked with for many years. They should be proud of their achievements, hospitality, and success. However, unless China takes the step we have asked for, we cannot put our players and staff at risk by holding events in China. China's leaders have left the WTA with no choice. I remain hopeful that our pleas will be heard and the Chinese authority will take steps to legitimately address this issue. Practically everyone supported the WTA's decision to suspend tournaments in China, and I feel the exact same way. I commend Simon on not just this decision, but how he's handled this entire situation. He's made frequent, relatively assertive statements since the start of the movement, demanding that Punk is not only safe, but free to speak and make decisions on her own accord. They could have just taken the easy way out and discarded everything completely after the IOC released their video call or revealed their video call, but he called BS on that and stood firm on what was right. Steve threatened a Chinese swing suspension weeks back, but I don't think officials took him seriously, which is why they thought those bare minimum updates were acceptable. This is a pretty big deal as the WTA has made a recent commitment to growing the sport in Asia, especially China. Simon said that it was a million dollar commitment, which included moving the WTA finals to Shenzhen for a 10 year period. Though the tour might lose some money deal wise, I don't think this is a dire matter at all. Truthfully, the Asian swing has some of the worst crowd attendance on tour, with huge stadiums adorned with empty seats. Besides the finals, the biggest loss would be Beijing, one of the older WTA 1000 events. Still, I think they could replace it with Ostrava and level up that Czech event. 
Then the WTA finals isn't an issue at all. They can just keep it at Guadalajara because the crowd there was incredible this year. I think it has the capacity to be even bigger too. Perhaps the tour should look into investing in the Latin American market. Now many people were anticipating the ATP to make a similar move to its counterpart and they were deeply disappointed. The mentor statement reads, The situation involving Pong Shui continues to raise concerns within and beyond our sport. The response to those concerns has so far fallen short. We again urge for a line of open direct communication between the player and the WTA in order to establish a clear picture of our situation. We know that sport can have a positive influence on society and generally believe that having a global presence gives us the best chance of creating opportunities and making an impact. We will continue to consult with our members and monitor any developments as this issue evolves. I mean, I don't know what to say except for, are y'all surprised? Even if this was an ATP player in Pong's shoes, I doubt that they go through half the measures that Simon did, let alone risk losing money. The ATP also risked far less than the WTA with only one big tournament, Shanghai, being held in China. Tour players like Riley Opelka have called out the association for the lackluster response. Perhaps if there are more developments in the store that actually enact significant change. Anyways, we're on the topic of the ATP. The tour released their nominations for the year-end awards. For the most improved player of the year, there's Carlos Alcaraz, Cam Nori, Aslan Karatsev, and Kaspar Ruud. All four of these players really deserve these nominations, but I think Alcaraz, while has shown tremendous improvement, should be counted out because he really should have been nominated for Newcomer of the Year. In that category, Brandon Nakashima, Sebastian Baez, Jensen Brooks, Hugo Gaston, and Juan Manuel Serendolo are nominated. From what's here, I choose Nakashima and then Brooksby. Now for the stuff on Edward Sportsmanship Award, our nominees are Francis Tiafo, Rafael Nadal, Felix Auger Aliasim, and Casper Ruud. Yannick Sinner's fan base wasn't happy at all to see Francis' name on this list, still not getting over Tiafo's alleged showboating in Vienna. Yannick's fans really need to get over this. It's been over a month since that match, and it's really a terrible look for y'all to keep dragging Francis' name through the mud. For my last story about men's tennis in this video, the Davis Cup is unfortunately still going on as Croatia and Russia face off for the trophy. Despite Novak Djokovic remaining undefeated in singles throughout this year's finals, Serbia fell to Croatia 1-2 in the semifinals. 279th ranked Borna Gojo has been carrying his country as well, going 3-0 thus far, getting wins over Lorenzo Sonego, Alexei Popperin, and most recently Dusan Lajevic. Djokovic dominated Marin Cilic and Strays to keep Serbia in contention, but the doubles duo of Mekdic and Pavic was far too good. This loss marks the end of an incredible season for Novak, where he won three slams and finished as the year end world number one for record seven time. As some have mentioned, Djokovic had his disappointing moments this year, going medalist in Tokyo, falling one match short of the calendar slam, and now Davis Cup. Regardless, literally any player would die to have the season he's had, so congratulations Novak, and I wish you a tranquil offseason. Really quickly though, Novak is still doubtful of his participation in the 2022 Australian Open, as player are required to be vaccinated in order to compete. After the loss to Croatia, the world number one told reporters, I know what you want. I'm not going to give you an answer tonight. I know what you want to ask me, but you will be informed. That's all I can tell you. I cannot give you any date. <laughs> the entry list for Melbourne closes in two days on the 6th, so maybe then we'll have our answer, but until then, it is what it is. Lastly, former world number four Joe Conta has officially retired from the sport of tennis. The Brit announced her departure Wednesday in a statement reading, Grateful. This is a word that I've probably used the most during my career, and this is the word that I feel explains it the best at the end, Counter wrote. My playing career has come to an end, and I'm so grateful for the career it has turned out to be. All the evidence pointed to me not making it in this profession. However, my luck materialized in the people that came into my life and impacted my existence in ways that transcended tennis, she continued. Through my own resilience and through the guidance from others, I got to live my dreams. I got to become what I wanted and said as a child. How incredibly fortunate I count myself to be. How grateful I am. Kant is right, she showed a lot of resilience coming from someone who many believed had wasted potential to reaching the final four stage at three different majors and winning a WTA 1000 title. She has been overshadowed recently with the success of Amaradu Kanu, but she still deserves her credit for impacting British women's tennis. Joe's last full successful season was in 2019, where she made the French Open semis and global quarters. She had one notable result in 2020 where she reached the Cincinnati semifinals, but she definitely struggled since then. Much of 
of her 2021 season was plagued with injuries, but she was able to nab a title in Nottingham ahead of Wimbledon. Unfortunately, she couldn't play the championships because someone from her team tested positive for COVID, which made her a close contact. She then caught COVID and struggled with thigh issues, ruling her out of the Tokyo Olympics and the US Open. Last month, she spoke about her concerns of needing to be vaccinated for Melbourne, which I think could have played a role in her decision too. She did tell the debutee that she might come back to the tour, but regardless, I hope she enjoys her retirement. That's it for this video, and let me know in the comments what you think about the debutee's decision and the ATP's lack of one in regards to Pong Shui. Also, how do you feel about Djokovic and Contas Mansions as well? Make sure y'all subscribe and click the notification bell too, so you're notified whenever I post new content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time here on Grand Slam Tennis News Today.